So stem cell therapy and regenerative medicine is an emerging or emergent field within the field of medicine. And the whole field revolves around the ability to regenerate, repair, or restore function or tissues and cells. There are many advantages to the field of regenerative medicine, both now and potentially in the future, but it's a complicated field. And it's something that a lot of practitioners right now are confused about and want more information so that they can help their patients make wise decisions or even so that they can help their patients directly. Regenerative medicine includes more than just stem cells. When we talk about regenerative medicine, a lot of people think stem cells are all of regenerative medicine, and, and that's not completely true. Stem cells are a component of regenerative medicine, but it includes a lot of other factors like growth factors, cytokines, cell mediators, scaffolding, matrices that are involved in the whole stem cell regenerative medicine process. It also includes items that most physicians are aware of already, things like NSAIDs, steroids, or anti-inflammatory medications, hyaluronic acid. Uh, some physicians are familiar with amniotic fluid, for example, which for the record does not contain any living or live or viable stem cells. It's basically a fluid with just growth factors and other types of cell mediators uh, that can be useful, but they're not stem cells. And this is an important point. As a community of practitioners, and, and really even as patients, we need to understand that stem cell therapy, regenerative medicine therapy, growth factor therapy can be beneficial, but only if it's done with the right provider and only with the right products. So there are multiple different products, different technologies, different companies that are out there. There are autologous stem cells and there are non-autologous stem cells. Autologous stem cells can be derived from multiple different factors, most commonly fat-derived and bone marrow-derived. Non-autologous stem cells can be derived from multiple factors involving the placenta, so they can be Wharton's jelly, they can be umbilical cord, and amniotic membrane-derived cells. You can also see umbilical cord blood stem cells, but there are some disadvantages to those compared to some of the other products that we have. The point is that if you're going to get involved in regenerative medicine, if you're going to get involved in stem cell therapy, you really need to educate yourself on all the different technologies that are out there, all the harvesting options that are out there, some of the risks, some of the benefits, and how to use these products together in conjunction perhaps with each other, and how that might benefit the patient the best. Insurance companies, insurance companies do not cover stem cell for musculoskeletal problem or neurodegenerative problems currently. And it might be a while before they do cover those uh, conditions. That's also important because that means the patient's going to have to pay cash for these services. That's important because what we see right now are some legitimate regenerative medicine clinics and some not so legitimate regenerative medicine clinics. And if it's not done correctly, the stereotype that, that the whole field will have is one that's preying on uh, the, the needy preying on those that, that have limited capital and, and could potentially suffer financial harm if they give their money to less than honest providers. So as a community, it's important that we all educate ourselves about what regenerative medicine means and what the technologies are so we can properly educate our patients about choices and providers that they should visit if they're interested in regenerative options.